Look at the length of that. Oh my. Well, just down here, look. What is this? All those barnacles off. That is one big stopper. Wow. I wonder what that came off. Massive jug or something like that, I imagine. That is definitely coming back with me. In the bucket it goes. Right, there's a few bits and pieces around here. Now I'm left with this old man stick today because I left my trowel on the River Medway a few weeks ago but there's a jar or something here. Let's have a look. Oh it's a screw top, probably a viral jar. I'm not going to bother washing fines today to show you because it's minus 6 degrees and I don't want to get hypothermia. So we'll trust that one as that. And there's another find here, let's have a look see if this is a... Oh. No bowl on that one. And there was a bottle that I saw around it. Oh, there it is. Let's have a look. See if it's got anything on it and if it's complete. Oh my God. Well, I said I wasn't gonna wash things, but I have to with this. Oh my God, look at that. Ow, that is freezing. Oh my goodness, that is cold. Oh, I regret that very, very much, but let's hope this has got something on it. Oh, it's freezing and painful, blimey. Oh my God. That is a very tiny torpedo bottle. Oh my God, and it's got the words split soda on it. Oh my Lord, look at that. Now that's got to be a rare size torpedo that. That's got to be like the world's smallest torpedo bottle. Oh my goodness, and in last video I was complaining that I haven't found a torpedo in two years. And look at me now. Oh my lord, look at that. Wow. It's trying to get that stuff out. That is amazing, that is. Stick around to the round up and we'll have a look. And see what it looks like. I need to take a photograph of this. There we are. Well, just down here, I thought this was a cannonball for a second. See if the camera focuses. Now I do apologise in advance if the camera does fog up. It's quite misty this morning, as you can imagine. But yeah, I just found this ball thing. I thought it was a cannonball, but it's actually wood. So I'm going to take that home, hopefully preserve it, and then we'll have a look and investigate what it could be in the roundup. Looks quite interesting to me, even though it is just a wooden ball. I quite like it. Right, let's have a game of spot the find. Can you see this find at a far distance? I'll give you a clue. It is my nickname, AKA Mr. Pipe Man. Let's go have a little look and see if it's gonna be complete. Look at that pipe there. Oh, before we look at that, look at that there. It's still got his cork in that. How cool is that? Right, let's have a look at this pipe. There we are. Oh yeah, that's a lovely one that. Fantastic, lovely and orange. That will soon turn back to white, hopefully. Fantastic pipe find, it's quite a large bowl that one. I'm surprised it's broke, it's not broken yet because look at that hole there. Lucky to find that one, indeed. Right, if I just turn around and put this in the bucket, there's a bottle there. Let's have a look at this bottle. Might have something on it, you never know. No, it's a plain wine bottle this time. Never mind. Hopefully we'll find an embossed bottle today. Well, there's a bottle over here. Looks like a milk one. Let's have a look. Blimey, that is frozen. Yeah, a milk bottle. What's that say? 
United Dairy is quite common, so I'll leave that one there. I hope to find a local milk bottle someday. I did find one, and it wasn't whole, so I had to cut it down. But um, hopefully one day I'll we'll find a complete one. Marmalade jar here. Look at that. Oh, look at that mud. It's so black and gooey. Ugh. Yeah, look at that. Lovely. It's got a chip at the side. But yeah, lovely. Marmalade jar, jam jar. Well, there's another pipe down here. I know it's not complete, but it does look like it's patterned. Oh, no, it isn't patterned. Oh, never mind. We'll leave that one then. Right, but finds are coming up left, right and centre because I've just seen a bit of stoneware here. What is this here? What on earth is that? Let's a closer look at that. It's like a, a toilet pulley or something like that. It's broken anyway, so we'll leave it, but quite interesting. Nice little bottle stopper there, look at that. Fantastic. Pick it up. Oh, it's embossed as well. Right, let's go give it a little swishy wash down in the stream, even though it is cold. Just keep checking these pipes. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh wow, look how lucky that was. Did you see that? Lovely pipe extraction there. We'll give that a wash as well. Very lucky to have this creek very local. I've got so many fines coming up now. Oh, look at that. That's a nice one, that. Plain one again, but it doesn't really matter. I'll leave the mud in there in case there's Victorian tobacco in there. But, yeah, lovely clay pipe. And let's give this little wash, this bottle stopper. Holbrooks & Co, that one, that bottle stopper. So, yeah, two lovely Chapley finds next to each other. Oh, hang on a second. Looks like we've got another one spawning in here. What's this? Oh, good old tablespoons. Got a few of them already. Yeah, it's a lovely morning out here. It's just hit 7am now. Yeah, lovely. You can barely see anything, but hopefully with the uh, zoom on the camera, you'll be able to see quite a lot today. I can only see a few metres in front of me. So I've got to be extremely careful. At least no one will steal my trolley. Um, so I've hid it in the bushes, but... Um, <laughs> Yeah, right, let's have a look at this here. Oh, blimey. Oh, it's a big jar, that. What's that? Top or something, I guess. Yeah, broken. Yeah, you just got to keep looking around because you don't know what you're going to find. Oh, look, I see the bottom of a bottle there. What's it going to be? Oh, I see embossing. Oh, look at that. Right, oh my goodness. What is this? Oh, oh no, it's a broken cod. Oh, what a shame on that. Oh, we are going to get that little wash, though, because it might be worth taking home, cutting down or something. So let's give that a little wash in this water. Blimey, this is freezing. <sighs> Whose silly idea was it to come out here? <laughs> oh, blimey. Right. What's this cod bottle say, then? Blimey, I don't even know. It's just so uh, cold that I can't even feel my fingers, but Campbell, well, oh, it's something to do with London. Um, selling, selling or refilling this bottle is illegal. Yeah, we'll leave it then. <laughs> right, where did I put the pipe and the, look at me hands, I'm freezing. Oh, it doesn't matter, I'm having lots of fun out here in the mud. Yeah. Right, let's just have a little walk around. I'm not even going to bother turning the camera off because I know I'm going to find something. Look, lovely scenery shot there, look at that. Got the house. There we are. Look at that. Fantastic, that. That's definitely coming back. Right, I'll catch you on the next find then. Which hopefully will be very shortly. Well, just over there. I can spy a bottle. It's looking complete. It looks green, but will it? But will it have any embossing on it? Let's take a look. Put the bucket and stick down there. All right, let's have a look at this 
bottle here. There's a plain one, but it looks quite early on this one. Oh, it's quite nice. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to take it, so I do want to carry light, but yeah, it's a lovely example of a wine bottle. Fantastic. Well, there's a bottle poking out the surface here. Oh, it's got some embossing on it. Oh no, look at that. Oh, it's broken. Like there would have been a hair restorer, it looked like it, that's what it said. Oh, never mind, we'll leave that one there. Hopefully we'll find something else next. Well, it's still missing. I've just seen this little bottle and it's also thundering. Yeah, the weather's messed up in the UK recently, but look, let's have a look at this. Blimey, that is frozen. Let's use the stick. Just, there we are. Let's have a look at this. Oh, it's broken. Never mind, it's a wine bottle. By the looks of it. Right, I'm just going to pick up my bucket. And we can go on a little walk. Down here, see if there's anything we can catch live on camera. Let's just have a look. Things keep coming up left, right and centre. So probably, now that I have the camera on, I'm not going to find anything. But, let's just... Have a look. I don't know if you can hear the thunder, but yeah, the weather's very weird currently. I've got snow due tonight, minus six degrees still, and I'm not frozen yet. I have about five or six layers on and a cup of coffee, but yeah, well, I should say a flask of coffee that's probably what's keeping me warm, and of course, walking through this mud. But yeah, I'm surprised I haven't frozen yet. I'm surprised this water isn't frozen. Well, it is tidal after all, so it wouldn't freeze over, but you never know. Yeah, I'm not getting much luck with the camera on, so I'll catch you as soon as I found something when the camera's off. <laughs> well, look at that there. Looks like a clay pipe. Looks a bit rusty. Probably from all the staining in the water. Hmm, it looked quite old, 1700s on that one. Oh, let's have a look, let's have a look. Oh, look at that. History in your hands is absolutely fantastic. History book on the shelf is always repeating itself, lovely saying, and it always is. Lovely clay pipe there, look at that. That's certainly going to be in my pipe collection. Put that in the bucket. With the other pipes on the day. Yeah, we're doing quite good on pipes. Lovely. No wonder they call me the pipe magnet. <laughs> oh, it's quite a big bottle here. Oh, it's another one of those wine bottles. That one's not that old, terribly old anyway. Um, so I'll leave that one. They're everywhere, these things everywhere not complaining absolutely fantastic but i still want to find one with embossing on it sometime yeah it's a lovely find well it looks like another milk bottle Let's see if it's got anything on it no it's a plain one very burnt as well yeah we're not doing so bad but this fog's getting thicker and thicker and thicker but i can barely see anything so i think it's going to be an early day called whatever you want to call it I think it's going to be an early exit today out of this creek because I can see more on the camera than I can in person and you can barely see anything on the camera so yeah uh, I've got no idea where I am I could be walking towards the water for all I know I've got to be careful because I can't see if the tide's coming in um, so yeah I'm going to have a little more uh, fun in the mud and then um, I'm going to call it a day because I am tired as well. It's it's quite warm now. A bit um, muggy, so the snow's on its way, indeed. Let's see what else we can find. Well, oh my goodness, I am absolutely over the moon, as you could tell by my voice. Look at the length of that. Oh my god. 
Right, I'm gonna come back to you, I need to take a photograph of that. Oh my God. Well, here we are. Just took some photographs of the fantastic clay pipe here. Now, by the looks of it, this is a 17, late 1700s, early 1800s clay pipe. Um, it's orange due to all of the acids and things in the water. And of course, all the algae it stains things. So I'm not surprised that the pipe in situ is this color. Right, moment of truth. Oh my goodness. This is like one of my dreams. <gasps> Look at that. Is that a spider? Oh, no. Why would there be a spider? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Just take a look at the length of that. Holy moly. I don't even know what to say, but let's just try not swear. Uh, right, uh, let's give this a little wash. Oh, my God. Look at that. Whoa, what have I done to deserve that? Fantastic clay pipe indeed. And I am going to put that in a lovely frame as soon as I get home. And that is definitely one of my top pipes so far. Absolutely fantastic. Let's get the snail out. We don't want to take him home, do we? Try not to smash it. Oh, there we are, he's gone out. Look at that. I don't even know what to say, but thank you River Thames. That is a fantastic clay pipe there. Very lucky to have this disclosed spot off the Thames and Medway on my doorstep. This is actually an illegal dumping ground. It's not illegal for me to be here. The rubbish that is here is illegal back in the time but I'll tell you more about that in a few minutes but look at that I don't even know what to say oh my god look at that this is what I come out here for stuff like this on the river oh my goodness what do I even say oh my goodness and it's even got a maker's mark on it wow now I wonder where this clay pipe came from wouldn't be surprised if it came from London town <laughs> but um yeah it's lovely clay pipe indeed. I don't even know what to say. Just got to keep on talking. Lovely jubbly. Fantastic. That is just, uh, I don't even know what to say. Fantastic. There we are. Now there's a jar there, but before we pick that up, take a look at the shape of that bottle. Imagine finding that complete. Wonder what it would have been. Looks like a beehive or something like that. All right, let's go take a look at this jar, shall we? Looks like a pickle jar. Oh, yes it is. It's got so much gunk in it though. Yeah, I think I'm gonna take that with me. We'll just get a little wash off in the river in a minute, as it is an old one by the looks of it. Hopefully it'll clean up lovely. Yeah, there was another one just over there, but it's cracked unfortunately, so I left it there. And didn't bother to record it but yeah this is a lovely one and uh, yeah I don't usually take them but I am going to take this one indeed hopefully you'll see it in the roundup all cleaned up fantastic well it's another clay pipe bowl here a bit red this time get a little swishy wash look at that tiny pipe bowl that lovely fantastic that one Well, it's a day of pipes, that's for sure. Look, there's another clay pipe here. And again, it's got oil inside. Look at that. Nice clay pipe. It's weird, it's got a hole in it. Yeah, very nice clay pipe, that's definitely coming back. Fantastic, in the bucket that goes. Gotta be careful with that long one. I'm not gonna leave it in that bucket, I'm gonna put it in a separate bag. 
Well, it looks like there's a bottle there. Right. Let's just put it out. Oh, what is that? Oh, it's broke, whatever it is. Ow, it's a torpedo bottle. It's got loads of embossing, but I'm not going to bother looking because I am frozen, as you can see. Ouch. And, uh, yeah, the tide. It looks like it's there. I think that's the river. Unless it's fog, I have no idea. I can barely see anything. I can see better on the camera than I can in person. So, yeah, I've just got to be very careful. Because where I am, it's a little island and the water goes around it, so... I don't want to be hurt, yeah. You get what I mean? <laughs> and then look at me here. Trousers are filthy. Yeah, it's worth it for that pipe though. Look at that. Look at that beast. Blimey. I'm never going to forget this day. Look at that. Now there's a bit of pottery down here and it does have some writing on. Let's put it on a rock and have a closer look at that. Look at that. Uh, BG Chip Wine and Spirit Company, I'm guessing, and that's probably South End, I think. We'll have to take that and have a little research. Wonder what this is. And I wonder what stories it holds. And I wonder what story it holds. But there's one thing for sure, and that's what I'm going to find out. Absolute fantastic mudlark that was. It was very foggy and I have quite a few clay pipes in the collection. So let's start off clay with the pipes firstly, shall we? One here, a lovely prime example of an 1800s clay pipe. Now this is the one with the hole in the side as you saw in the video. And it does seem to have a flower design on the back. And this was there to hide the mould line. Now we have another example of an 1800s clay pipe. This one doesn't have any holes in, apart from the top. Um, but yeah, lovely prime example. Plain, unfortunately. But it's a lovely clay pipe. 1700s clay pipe there, look at that. Absolutely brilliant. A 19th century clay pipe. Fantastic, still got the mud in it. Now here's that wooden ball I found. I thought it was a cannonball at first, but after cleaning, it was wood. And by the looks of it, it's come off a boat or something because at the bottom, it's all rusty. I have not, I have knocked it all off, thankfully. But um, if anyone knows what it could have been, please let me know. It could have fell off a barge or something like that. After all, they did dump all the rubbish in the creek. Lovely bit of Victorian transfer wear there. It's broken perfectly. You can just see the house and the chapel and the church and a little fairy up in the tree. Absolutely fantastic piece of pottery. A Liam Perrins bottle stopper, fantastic, and a very large stopper there. I think it comes off a big jug or something like that. Oh, it doesn't fit, but yeah, you get it, you get the point. Could have fitted into something like that. Look at the rim on that, it's massive. Another pottery shard, this bit says RG Chip Chase Wine and Spirit Company. South End uh, Rose and Spirits. So yeah, it's a lovely um, shirt there. A lovely, interesting piece of Victorian detritus, you could say. Fantastic. Now moving on to the two star finds of the day. 
this tiny tiny torpedo bottle look at that it's so tiny and it says split soda on it so I'm guessing it's some kind of sample or some kind of soda cleaned up fantastically and unfortunately it does have a chip in the side but it doesn't matter um, after all because it's a lovely bottle I've never seen one that tiny before now the star find of the day this clay pipe look at that absolutely fantastic my longest clay pipe ever um, now I have taken it to the heritage hub of Sittingbourne as they wanted to research some of my pipes and they have given me a document about this clay pipe and researched it for me Christopher Leggett, born in 1675, was an apprentice to Rochester pipe maker John Halloway, who was master to at least five apprentices, and his son John Jr., who claimed his freedom, by the way, of patientinity. Leggett gained his freedom of the city on the 29th of June, 1695. Canterbury was a centre of country pipe making, and Leggett was probably employed there as a journalman when he married Mary Clinton at St Andrew's Church in Canterbury on the 5th of August, 1707. They settled down to married life in Milton and Sittingbourne, where their firstborn twins, Christopher and Benjamin, were baptised at the parish church of Holy Trinity on the 17th of February 1708. Their happiness was however short-lived. Christopher died and was buried on the 21st of March, followed by Benjamin on the 5th of May the same year. Their daughter Mary was baptised on the 3rd of July the next year, followed by her sister Elizabeth on the 10th of June 1712. Mary died and was buried at Holy Trinity on the 23rd of September 1714. A replacement Mary was baptised on the 6th of November the following year. All three girls died and were buried during November and December in 1715. Mary Leggett's mystery was compounded, was compounded when husband Christopher died and was buried on the 21st of August 1716. Four days later, Anne, daughter of Christopher and Mary Leggett, was buried at Holy Trinity. There is no record of Anne's baptism, but so one must assume they were stillborn. There is no explanation as to the cause of the Leggett children's death, nor of Christopher's. However, smallpox was the rive in Milton and Sittingbourne at the time period, and the Marsh Creek algae was an epidemic. The Leggett family were very rich. They had a main room called the fire room, the only room with heating. An open fire contained six leather chairs, a clock a looking glass, seven pictures, two maps and seven old books. Two coat racks and seven candlesticks may indicate a public room where Leggett met customers and perhaps entertained friends. The Leggett's possession of eight tablecloths and 36 napkins may prove this point. Linen is considered a measure of wealth based on its expense. The Leggett had four beds, 14 pairs of sheets and 10 pairs of pillowcases. On the 4th of February 1721, Mary Leggett married John Bagnall at Milton in Sittingbourne at the parish church by licence. On the 16th of August 1730, Mary Bagnall was buried at Holy Trinity. On the 2nd of February 1731, John Bagnall married Martha Boulton at Bobbing. On the 5th of July 1741, Martha Bagnall was buried at Holy Trinity. On the 31st of January 1742, John Bagnall, the pipe maker of this clay pipe, married Amy Lambert at St Michael's Parish Church in Sittingbourne. Bristol and London were the major centres of pipe manufacturing in England. Neither were immune from market inflation. Indeed, they were probably more sustainable from the main essentials. The increase in snuff taken in the early 18th century may have been mitigated by a fall in the cost of tobacco generally which would have helped to maintain a level of pipe smoking and the demand for pipes. Now skipping 50 years, there was a man called William Webb in the family, dated between 1820 to 1906, and he held a virtual monopoly of pipe making in Milton in Sittingbourne during the later half of the 19th century. He was born to William and Elizabeth Nigor, who had married at Milton on the 10th of December 1810. He himself married Sarah and Stuart at Tenham, a marriage which appears to have been childless. So there we are, there's a bit of history about that clay pipe and the pipe makers of Sittingbourne from the 16th century all the way to the late 19th century. There wasn't many clay pipe makers, there was only about seven from this record. And this pipe was made by John Bagnall 
in the 1700s so what a fantastic clay pipe that was so if you like this video please leave me a like comment and subscribe and if you'd like to support the channel even further i have a few links in the description for you including my ko-fi and amazon wishlist i'll see you again very very soon bye bye